close your eyes and try to stay right here in the present moment with the breath. Give the mind a good place to stay. The mind needs a good, solid place to stay. Because when we live in this world where as soon as there's birth, there's always the things that follow on with birth, i.e. aging, illness, death. And the mind has to deal with these things and learn how not to suffer from them. That's the skill that the Buddha taught. He didn't say there's any way to stop aging or stop illness or stop death. These things are going to happen regardless. No matter how advanced science gets, it's not going to be able to stop these things. So we have to be prepared for them, realizing that the things that we hold to, that are going to age, grow ill, and die, as long as we hold on to them, as long as we identify with them, we're going to suffer. So we have to learn how to let go of those things. We have to have something better to hold on to. This is why we practice. Try to get the mind in a good state of concentration so that it can have its own place to stand. And then it can look at these other things and realize, okay, the things that age, grow ill, and die, they, they have their uses. We're not just going to run away from them. We use them to create good things. We use them to be generous. We use our body to be generous. We use our thoughts to be generous, to be virtuous. This does good in the world. And it does good for us as well. But if we're identifying with these things, then as soon as they, they feel threatened, then it's very hard to continue doing the good. So you have to realize that these things are not really your, yours, they're not really yourself. They're things that you've got for the time being, you've borrowed them. You want to take good care of them, because as John Lee once said, someone came to him and said, when my friends are telling me that if everything is not self, why can't we hit you? And he says, well, this body I've got is something I borrowed. I've got to take good care of it. I've got to return it in good shape. So returning the body in good shape doesn't mean that you have to preserve it. What it means is that you use it well. Use it for the purpose of generosity, for the purpose of virtue, for the purpose of training your mind. Knowing that there will come a time when you have to let it go. That's getting good use out of it. If you latch onto it, then because you're latched onto these things, you start doing unskillful things. You start breaking the precepts. You start being stingy. Then the mind suffers. It creates the causes for suffering for itself and for others. So you have to learn how to step out of these things. So realizing that your own body, your family, your friends, the way things are around you, it's going to have to change. We, ch we chant that every day, every day. I will go different, separate from all that is dear and appealing to me. And it's not waiting until the end of life where that happens. Things just keep sloughing away. Even your own body keeps saying goodbye and goodbye. This part goes, that part goes. So what are you going to hold on to? You want to hold on to something better. Hold on to something that's not going to make you struggle and do unskillful things in order to maintain this body here or what, what you've got in terms of your material wealth. The world may change in very strange ways, but you don't want your virtues or your principles to change. You hold on to those because they will lead you to a long-term welfare and happiness, much longer than the material things you have, much longer than even your body or your, your family can do for you. So this is your real refuge inside. So try to make sure that this refuge is strong, because if you don't have this refuge, then you just grab it, whatever comes your way, hold on to it. Then when it feels threatened, you start fighting everybody off. As I would have said, his vision of life, the vision that got him on the path to awakening was seeing that the world was like a little p little pool of a little, excuse me, a little stream of water, and there were all these fish in the water fighting one over over that last little gulp, last little gulp of water, but they're all going to die anyhow. It got him depressed. But then he realized okay, there must be a way out, and he found that the way out was looking into his own heart. And this way he was able to find the path that led to a happiness that doesn't have to depend on the body, doesn't have to depend on anything else around you at all. It's something found totally within. That's where we find our true well-being. That's where we find our true safety. And so long as we have that, then we're much less likely to do unskillful things to other people. So other people benefit from our finding a refuge, too. So you want to make sure that you make this refuge as solid as you can, because there really is no other safety in life. 